Hello. If you've been watching the hashtags, I support farmers, I stand with farmers, no farmers, no food, and wonder what this is about, given the deafening silence of mainstream media, especially in the Western world, keep on watching as I explain the situation. During its summer break, the Indian parliament rushed in three ordinances and then signed them into law on September 17, 2020. Since then, farmers across the country have been voicing their opposition to these bills. In a country of nearly 1.4 billion inhabitants, where about 60% of the households depend on agriculture as their livelihood, this equates to almost 840 million people. 840 million people is more than a tenth of the entire population on planet Earth, voicing their discontent. And you would think that the Indian government would listen, but they didn't. The farmers held rallies and protested across the country from September to November. Given the absence of dialogue, the farmers then decided to march to Delhi in the hope that their grievances will be heard. During their journey, they were met with police in riot gear throwing tear gas and water cannons at them, and even hitting them with pitons. The farmers persisted and reached Delhi, setting up camp at the border. At one point, the police had even approached the city to allow them to use nine city stadiums as prisons for the farmers. What a welcome. Now, what are these laws that we are talking about? A little bit of a background for clarification of terms first. In India, Agriculture comes under state legislation and not under central government legislation. Article 48 in Part 4 of the institution, Indian Constitution, puts organization of agriculture and animal husbandry under state jurisdiction. Each state typically has an APMC or Agriculture Produce Marketing Committee where the farmers sell their harvest to the government and where they are guaranteed a minimum support price or an MSP. These APMCs were created in 1939 by Sir Chotu Ram to allow farmers to get a fair share for their crops. In order to sell their crops at the APMC, the farmer and the purchaser or his agent need to pay a fee. Now, the main advantage of these APMCs is that they allow the farmers a guaranteed price for their crop. Legally, Farmers can sell outside the APMC in the open market as well. However, in the open market, there is no price guarantee. So what are these laws that are touted as beneficial for the farmers and promise to increase their revenue by removing middlemen? Keep in mind that these laws are not written with input or by consulting any farmers or farmer unions. The first bill is titled the Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Bill. This bill sets up a farming agreement where a sponsor provides seeds, fertilizers, agronomic practices, etc. This agreement will outline the quality, the grade, the standards, the use of pesticide, as well as the price and timing of the crop. The bill specifies that the sponsor can tie insurance and credit instruments to the agreement, which in this case translates to the land belonging to the farmer. Now the sponsor can also hire an individual aggregator or a group of persons to be their intermediaries, which means that no middlemen are being eliminated in this process. Upon delivery of crops, the sponsor needs to pay at least two thirds of the agreed amount and the remaining balance after inspection within 30 days. Now, if a dispute arises, there is no legal recourse and the disagreement must be resolved by a conciliator or a subdivisional magistrate. Now, the positions of magistrates in India are notorious for corruption. So the farmers say that the layers of middlemen and intermediary parties are only being added in the process and not being reduced. In case there is a dispute, chances of having an unfair verdict increase because the sponsor with its deep pockets and corruption can sway the mediator. Another concern that the farmers have is the lack of control they have in open air cultivation, factors 
such as the amount of rain, the variation in temperature and other climatic conditions which can cause either a delay in harvesting, thus causing delays in delivery of goods as well. Now, if you were told that you could participate in a baking contest with the potential to win up to, but not necessarily, a thousand dollars where the ingredients are predetermined and you will be given a loan to buy the cups, the various utensils and any other things. Now you have to cook outdoors irrespective of the environment and at the end of the day, you may not even get a cent if they don't like your baked goods. In which case you will also be responsible for paying back for the utensils and any other loans that you took to participate in the contest. Or you can also participate in a contest where you can take a loan to buy the ingredients, use your own recipe, cook outdoors, and you are guaranteed to get $500 or more. Which contest will you choose? Now the second bill is the Farmers Empowerment and Protection an agreement on price assurance and farm services. Before I begin, I must commend the Indian government on their creativity in naming bills, even though the actual bill itself may not be ref a reflection of its name. Now, this bill allows the farmers to sell their produce outside the APMC, which by the way, they can legally do already. This bill allows for private marketplaces to exist alongside the state-controlled APMCs. A key difference though is that unlike in the APMCs, the private marketplaces do not charge a sales tax. Also, in the private market, there will be no MSP. So by creating these two unbalanced systems for the sale of goods, the central government is taking away the state government control over agriculture. This by itself is unconstitutional. The price that the farmers will get in the open market will be decided by the free market players who may utilize the lack of sales tax in their market to initially tempt farmers with higher rates for their produce. If the past offers any insight to the future, let's look at the Eastern Indian state of Bihar. The Bihar government eliminated the APMC system in 2006. In these past 14 years, has the Bihari farmer's income gone up? No. With the APM system, with the APMC system in Punjab or in Haryana, the farmer is still getting 1700 rupees for a quintal of rice. A quintal of rice is about 100 kgs or about 220 pounds. In the open market, the same quintal of rice is being sold by Bihari farmers for only 800 rupees. Again, as a farmer, which system would you choose? Now, most farmers in Bihar own less than a few acres of land, which then they had to sell away as they make more money working as field laborers in other states as Punjab, which still have an MSP. So if anything, the creation of open market is expected to take even these jobs away. To further put things in perspective, the Indian consumer pays on average 1300 rupees for 10 kgs of rice. The farmer is getting paid for toiling in the fields and growing 100 kgs of rice, less money than what is getting sold in retail for 10 kgs of the same produce. So this is less than 10% of the entire amount. The third bill is the Essential Commodities Act. This bill allows for the removal of basic grains, cereals, pulses, onions and other vegetables from the list of essential commodities for everyday use, meaning there is no price control or punishment for hoarding such items anymore. These items will be brought back under the list of essential commodities only in case of war famine, natural catastrophes, or if there is an extraordinary increase in price, which is 100% for perishable goods 
and 50% for non-perishable goods. Now this will allow for the sudden doubling of prices of these essential food items before any measures can be taken by the government to restrict an increase in the price. In the midst of an unprecedented worldwide pandemic, the government is going to allow the basic staples of the Indian diet to be hoarded and to have these prices dicta dictated by the open market. This bill will also directly impact the consumer as it will result in an increase in the cost of basic groceries. To see how this works, let us take an example from the telecom sector. At the inception of the telecom industry in India, there were 12 players in the market, most of which are now defunct. Reliance Tele Telecommunication, which launched its Reliance Geo telecom service by drastically reducing the rates to below their cost price in a common strategy to monopolize the market, has still survived. This led to various other telecom providers having to close down shop as they did not have the buffer to take similar losses. After capturing the telecom market, Reliance Geo increased their prices as there was little competition left in their way. If corporations themselves could not survive the open market dictated by such oligarchs, how will the ordinary farmer survive? The government says that they want to give the farmers and the consumers choice. Then why not let other national and international retailers enter the 670 billion US dollar Indian retail sector. Who is the current major player in this 670 billion dollar market? You guessed it, it's Reliance. Given the recent decisions made by this government, the country is being increasingly ruled by oligarchs where, while we still have elected officials at the helm Formulation and implementation of laws is actually being controlled by a handful of large industrial conglomerates and families. Is that the direction which the Indian people want to go towards? Or do we want to live in a thriving democracy of the people, by the people and for the people?